Hello, I'm David Wills. This is the Behringer Wing. Your time is valuable. So I'm gonna go through the wing in the fastest way possible and give you a thorough overview of the entire unit. Let's go. Okay, the first thing that you'll notice about the wing that kind of differentiates it from a lot of our other mixers is that you have three different fader banks on the front panel here, a bank of 12, a bank of eight, and a bank of four over here. And you can assign to what these faders are doing by these buttons along the left-hand side. So this would be input channels one through 12, then 13 through 24, and so on. And then across here, you could maybe set this up to DCA. So these are your input channels over here, and then these are your DCAs, and then maybe you have your main and your matrix mixes over here. So this could be your main left and right, and then the various other main mixes that you have set up there. So three fader banks completely independent. To assign any source to a channel, all we need to do is select a channel, any one of these. So now we'd be deciding what are we gonna feed channel one? And we go underneath home and we can go right here and decide what we're gonna bring in. It could be a local channel, it could be USB, it could be a networked. Uh, anything you like, you can just assign there to that particular channel. Now you can do that one by one or you can do it a lot quicker if you go underneath routing and channels and then decide that uh, you're gonna say bring in USB to all of these channels here. All you need to do is set it up over here, USB audio, and with this plus one auto setup, you could say, okay, I'm gonna bring in say uh, 17 here, then 18, 19, 20. This is this quick, you could assign all of these channels, all of these channels to accept their inputs from USB audio. If you ever wanna bring your console back to its factory settings, go underneath setup, general, initialize console, initialize and confirm and everything will go back. I just did that so that we go back to our local XLRs on the rear panel here. So once you've assigned a source to a channel, I could bring any of these, uh, this, say this first channel up and the main left and right bus here. And then we can start with selecting that channel and we can go through all of these goodies on the left hand side. We have a gate, EQ, compressor and two insert effects. So starting off with a gate, all you need to do is turn it on and then adjust the threshold and the ratio and so on. But Keep in mind that you don't just have to use this kind of more traditional uh, gate and expander here. If you can see this arrow here, don't miss this, pop this down and you have all these incredible models of really famous gates. And the same thing will happen down here in the compressor if we turn that on. Here's a standard kind of compressor, but look at all of these other models of compressors. And then in between that is our EQ and we would turn that on and you can either adjust that with the soft knobs down here or you can just grab these and just move them around. Even with a thumb underneath there, you can adjust the cue and then uh, sweep that up and down. It's very, very handy. Now, you uh, might have also noticed that on the right hand side, we have a channel strip here that is mimicking what's going on on the left hand side. And what that means is that I can easily make any changes over here without being in this screen. So imagine if I was over in the metering section, I can still be adjusting whatever channel that I have selected down here. And you don't just need to do that with EQ. There is a filter, gate, compressor, insert, all of that good stuff is over here. So you can be looking at one thing on the screen, but really going down in a deep dive of exactly what's going on on whatever channel you have over here. And if you ever wanted to copy from one channel to another, that's as easy as pie, go underneath the tools here, and we can copy that uh, over to number two. Let's copy that. And now you can see that that EQ curve has been copied over there, and you can use the same screen to initialize um, anything you want. Uh, I mentioned before about the insert effects. If we go to the insert effects here, this one is pre-fader, and then you could bring up all of these effects. We have standard effects, we have premium effects, there's so many models here. 
and we have slots for 16 of them. So for example, if we wanted to bring up this um, uh, this imager, then that's pre-fader, go over to the post-fader, and we can do the same thing with the second effect slot and maybe uh, do a delay over there. So this is all just on this one channel. So much processing. Okay, let's look at bus sends, which can be used for monitor sends or even common effects loops. And as you can imagine, it's pretty easy to set these up on a selected channel. You just turn them on and here's the send. We're sending a portion of channel one out to bus send one. So you can do this individually for each channel. Just go through to each channel, turn that on, and then this is the amount of send of channel two going out to bus send one. And you can do it one by one this way, or there's actually a better way to do it with the um, send on faders flip. And so what we would do is select our bus here, select the first bus and hit send on faders. And you'll notice, do you remember the first two channels? I turned them on and gave them a certain amount there. Um, in fact, if I was to just go ahead and unmute all of these guys, you could then just make this is the blend. These are no longer faders for our input channels one through 12. They, uh, what with the send on faders flip here, these are now the sends of all of these faders out to bus number one. Now keep in mind that bus sends are a signal path themselves and they have all of their own processing. So you could maybe drop a limiter on your in-ear monitors that are being fed by bus number one here. Not only can they be set up as uh, standard sends or, or more kind of typical sends, you can also set them up as subgroups. Let me just turn these send on faders off. And that way, what you could do is have one of these buses group all of your drums. Let's imagine you had a bunch of drums over here. You could send them over to this bus set up as a subgroup. And that way you could do all of this common processing. Maybe you want to crush your uh, all of your drums or something like that. I mean, the least it will do is allow you to uh, adjust all of your drums on one fader, but this is a true signal path and you could add all of these effects right on this subgroup. Very handy. Another way of grouping channels, which you'd expect on any modern uh, mixer would be to use DCAs. And this is how quick you can group together channels on a DCA. You just hold down select. I've color coded all my drums here in, in this brown color. All I'd need to do is select all of them. And then now all of those drums come up underneath this fader. Daily I'm offering myself as a living sacrifice. Which I could mute. Or solo. In a similar way, we could set up mute groups this quickly. I'll hit view, I'll go over to mute group, and we have eight mute groups that can be either played back from or selected from here or down here underneath mute groups. So the first one here, I could say mute all of my drums. I just need to select all of them and hit close there. Now I can mute those first uh, 10 channels either from here or even if I'm away from the screen, I can do it straight down here. What about custom controls over here? We have four knobs and eight buttons. That would be enough, right? But you actually have 16 different layers of these custom controls and setting them up is as easy as just hitting view and then selecting the button that you want to have do something. So in this example, let's imagine I wanted to set this up to mute group one. And you can see that's already been named here. You can even give this uh, a color, light this up in say red uh, to kind of alarm you that this is a mute group right here. And then go to the next one and say, you know what, I just want that to mute. Um, uh, let me see maybe the acoustic guitar right here on the second one. So you can see that's muting channel 12. So I can mute the first uh, 10 
and then I can mute 12. And it doesn't have to just be mutes. I mean, there's so many different things you can assign to assign to that. And then the same thing with the knobs. That could be, say, the fader of channel number one. So now I can move that number one from here. But you can get the idea that you have four knobs and eight switches, 16 different layers of them to do anything you want. Obviously, this is a world class live mixer, but if you ever want to record any of those performances, you can do it in two different ways. We have a front USB key here, which is perfect for recording an entire mix. So you could route your entire left and right mix straight here, go down to a two track transport here and record as many files as you like onto this USB stick. And then on the multi track, if we were to go ahead and view that, you can record up to 64 individual channels, all of your sources, or you could either do it at the source or post fader. So you can have all of your effects. All of that can be recorded on the SD card on the rear panel. If you want to connect up to a door, you can easily do that underneath door control. And there's all of these presets so that you can start using the jog dial, uh, all of the um, transport buttons, and then uh, remotely mix everything that's on your DAW. It's if you've been fiddling around with some keyboard controllers with their little faders, how would it be to be able to control everything, including your transport and then all of your faders right here from the front panel? Now, as you can imagine, with so much customization available, you would want to be able to store all of your custom settings and you can easily do that underneath the library, either on the internal or into the USB stick as well. So let's imagine if we wanted to store the entire console, we would do that with snapshots that will absolutely store everything you want. And then when you recall that, you can decide what uh, is the recall scope. In other words, do you want to just bring all the channels back or just the effects? What do you want to bring back? And then we go down here into channels if you wanted to save any particular uh, channel and then effects settings and also the routing. But no matter what you do on the console, you can easily store it and then bring it back either internally in the machine or a USB stick that you can take on the go. That was a lot to go over. That's much faster than I would like to do this, but I know some of you just want to get the information really quick. If you want to get into much more details of this, we have a, a full course over two hours long, exactly how to go through your wing step by step. And it's a lot slower and much easier to consume uh, than what we've just gone through. So check it out at proaudioexp.com. And also check out, we also have a cheat sheet for the Behringer Wing on our website. Search for that underneath Behringer Wing on proaudioexp.com and that'll make getting around your wing a whole lot easier. Ciao for now.